So in another video, I found the squealing sound coming from my 2018 L5P Duramax. It was a broken stud on the exhaust manifold that was allowing number seven cylinder to leak out uh, past the gasket. So I had to pull the manifold off. To get the manifold off, you have to pull this pipe right here off. It's an EGR pipe that goes up to the EGR cooler. Then this heat shield has to come off and the heat shield will not come off as far as I've never been able to get it off without uh, pulling the pipe first then the manifold came off and the manifold pulling that off was not anywhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be the driver's side looks to be a whole lot worse but this one it really wasn't all that bad so the very far back hole all the way to the left on the bottom that's where my stud broke so now I'm going to try to get that out It's loose now if I can just work it out. If you've ever been working on a broke off bolt or a broke off stud trying to get it out, you know how happy I am at this point right here. I had been messing with this thing for like four days. I, I would come out and work on it a little bit and the stud extractor broke the first one I used and I had to deal with trying to get around it and I figured I'd have someone come over and weld a nut to it or weld something to it so it would spin out easier. It'd be I thought it would be better for the head and it'd just be quicker and easier. They failed, couldn't get it out. So then I had to go back through the weld and the bolt and the stud extractor. It was a pain in the butt. And uh, another gentleman come by and dropped off some carbide ball cutters is what he called it. And I've got a link to those in the description if you want to check them out and see what I'm talking about. If he wouldn't have brought those things, they chewed right through the weld, through the extractor, through the bolt and all of it. They made it a whole lot easier to get that out. So I did get the stud out yesterday. And this here is another bolt that I had, that had broken as I was taking it out. And uh, I went ahead and got this bolt out. It was an equal pain in the butt as the one in the, in the head. Uh, I basically had to drill a hole through it and chip it out. It was ridiculous i tried welding one nut out here it broke off a little lower weld another nut broke off a little lower laid a flat washer around it welded it to the stud that was sticking out the little nub that was sticking out put a nut on it then welded all that together and when i broke it the next time it broke down inside the manifold so that took a while that took i was flushed that off and on for a day all day long working on that one chip you know Drilled a hole through it, got it to the side, and then got it where I could chip it out. And the final chip come out a while ago right here. So, yep, so I had messed the threads up, but I didn't run a thread chaser through it, and I think it's going to be okay. I hope. Now i got to find another bolt. What I plan on doing is a little redneck-ish, and it may still happen, I don't know. Not if I can find a bolt, but I was going to put a bolt and a nut through it because it would work like that. Anything to keep a good cl tight clamp right here, but hopefully I won't have to. Um, I did use this for a bit, trying to get back through the weld that we put on it, and it helped out a lot. Someone asked me what kind of tool was that that I, I was using to take it out, and I bought a 55P stud extraction set for this job that I'm not going to say it didn't do me any good, but this is an old set that I had laying around from way back when. That is the actual stud extractor that I used. And you can go on Amazon or anywhere and look up stud extractors and you should find these. But that's the one I use and I've used it the most. But I'd forgotten I had those, so I ordered this set right here. It's a Nico 55 piece um, left-handed drill bits and the stud extractors to twist in. And then here is, now that was small, but you gotta remember, so is the stud, you know? That's one of the other studs. So, you know, I couldn't go with a great big one. Uh, so that one twisted off, and then 
I couldn't drill through that with one of these. It wasn't working for me. I didn't break one. I've just misplaced one. I'll find it as I'm cleaning up, I'm sure. But I'll show you. A friend of mine, my neighbor, stopped by and dropped off a carbide cutting ball. I'll show you that now. These are what he dropped off, and he said, man, those things... He used to work in a machine shop. He said, those things will cut through the hardest steel. He said, they'll, they'll do you a good job. And I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, man, those things are tiny. Yeah, that's, that's not going to work. But these things went right through the stud extractor that was broke off and actually spun it the other direction to loosen it up and toss that out. And uh, then it opened up another hole where I could get in. But without these, I'd still be sitting out there fighting. Those things are awesome. I don't know exactly what they're called, but that's, he called them carbide ball cutters, is what he called them. So I had figured these two right here would be the worst two, honestly, and they seem to have cleaned up the best. Trying to keep the video shorter, I didn't show the whole cleanup process, but I cleaned all my mating surfaces and I cleaned up all the threads on every hole that was threaded. If I'd have shown all that, it would have been a very long video. So I went ahead and put a couple of studs in, I was putting them in, and I'm not going to put them all in right now. I'm going to go ahead and put one or two, maybe four four in, and uh, that way I have a guide to set the manifold up on there on, and I'll have something to rest the gasket on, because they weren't all, I had to take a few of them out to get it off in the first place, so, and I believe these studs are longer than the factories. I'm going to measure those out. And I do know that the factories took a 5.5 millimeter head and these take a five millimeter head to tighten them up. I believe that's good. Run as far in my hand as I can. This may be starting to feel a little bit like progress here. I hope. There is the gasket. Yeah, the gaskets are just a bunch of metal shims kind of packed up, pushed up tight together. That's where that whistling sound comes from when you get exhaust leak. Oh, when it starts blowing between those. I scrub manifold. That's ugly. I was really hoping one of you guys remembered how that came out of there the other night, but I had to swing the EGR forward and put the manifold up in here this way and bring it down trying to stay off of the new gasket. Uh, it was a pain in the butt and I could not have done it one handed, so sorry about not getting a video. But, and to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it set on the studs one-handed either. So I figured I'd give you guys a look at where I was at right there. And I'll wiggle it around and slide it up on the studs. Like I said, all the top studs are still out except for the front one. And all the bottom studs are in except for the back one. So I'll wiggle it around, see if I can get something started here. I'm going for this one right here first. That's one I want first. So let's if I can get this started. I do believe it is. And it is. So now I'll take and push this joker up on there as tight as I can with my other hand and work that down as tight as I can by hand. And then I'll start the one feathers to the back on the bottom. Here we are with our problem child. I got it started. Just trying to bottom it out now. But that's uh, starting to look like a motor again. On to the next one. And when you put these things in, guys, don't try to force them. Twist them on your fingers. Don't put a ratchet on them until you get them threaded a good ways up in there by hand. You have to raise and lift and wiggle the manifold. Don't ever tighten one of the bolts up first that you already got in there. 
leave everything loose so you can wiggle it around so you can get it tight. Or so you can get all the bolts started before you start tightening anything up. So apparently when you order the stud kit from uh, PPE, you get two extras. Let me hang on to those. Um, it came with 10 instead of eight, so that's a good deal. So now I got them all on, all the studs are in. Now I will go ahead, because I gotta have the other spacer, whatever you wanna call that, I gotta have it before I put the very last one on and I'm probably gonna leave this one loose because it's easiest to get to. So I go ahead and put the one on, I'll get all the bottom started and all the rest of them. Torque them down, I wanna say it was I'm not gonna say until I relook it up because I don't want to say anything wrong. So, and I'll go ahead and get these bolts started back here. I just wanted to point out the little washer out here, a uh, little spacer. That, to the best of my understanding, that doesn't. That's not just a spacer. That's actually uh, when this stuff gets glowing red hot. When you're pulling a hill, pulling a load, and a truck heats up to a thousand, fourteen, fifteen hundred degrees, whatever this thing is setting at, because it gets super hot. It needs room to move around. That's why this pipe right here has that expansion joint in it and it's loose and floppy. Is because it has to have room to move. This manifold is gonna move on this head, believe it or not. It, it's All this stuff's gonna be expanding and contracting with the heat. So that's why this is very important. It doesn't, it'll, it works together so it doesn't break that stud. That's why I think this stud is broken because I was in all those heavy, hard, hard, hard pulls up in Washington with that heavy fifth wheel and 445,000 miles worth of that stuff. And I got it a little hotter than what it used, was used to being. And that's why that stud gave way, I do believe. But I may be wrong on that. But yeah, I just kinda wanted to point that out. Those are not just for looks. They actually serve a purpose. So that's why I have to have one before I put it back together. I got all three of the flange bolts tightened up. I was really happy to see that this one tightened up because it was one that I had uh, issues with. It went back together and tightened up. Um, this, the EGR, got it all on and tight. I've not torqued the manifold bolts and I have not found this daggum metal shim that goes in here. I called Lynn Layton, Chevrolet Indicator, Alabama was the closest one that was supposed to have it. Now they say they don't have it. They're gonna keep looking and call me in the morning. I may wind up finding one off of something else, trying to. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. Well, new day. I've been tinkering around with it for a few minutes, so I'll show you guys what I've done. So, we'll check it out. All right. So, called around looking for one of these guys. There's two dealers that showed to have, one showed to have two, one showed to have one, and one showed to have three. None of them can put their finger on it. I can order it offline for $4. So, for now, as bad as I hate to do this, I stacked up some washers just to give it a little give room. I'm ordering the, the correct one, and then I will change this out probably next week sometime. Now, the injector connectors, where I've had to replace them on the road, they look pretty ratty but they work. So what I have done is when you put all this stuff, keep this in mind guys, when you put all this stuff back together, you know, if your truck's running and you're running it every day, this pipe that comes off here keeps this heat shield from coming off. So you're not gonna be able to just slide this out. These are the two easiest injectors or connectors to get at. These are the two hardest in my opinion to get at because once you put that cover on, you're covered from right here back, or from right here forward is covered, and you can't hardly get in to this one. You may be able to get this one, but I don't know. The number one, no, you're not gonna be able to get it. So what I've done, and you guys will probably be able to see maybe just a little bit better than I can, is um, I have went up in here and replaced the number one connector not that it was giving any issues just because i'd rather deal with it here at my house while everything i never locked it in so here at my house with everything already all tore down 
than on the side of the road freezing cold somewhere hoping for the best so that's why i decided to go ahead and do that so i've already done the number one this will be the number three and i hope and pray that i'm not messing something up that that these wouldn't have lasted forever that you know i'm hoping i'm doing myself right by changing them so anyway i made a slit in this cover and cut it back i'm going to take this off as close to the plug as i can get it that way i got plenty of leads to come out because if you ever have to replace it again you're going to keep trimming and eventually you'll be back into this and i don't want that i'm going to hack it off right here strip the wires and put the other connector on plug it in and then i'll be ready to move on so here is the injector connector the pigtail whatever anybody wants to call it really doesn't matter uh i catch some slack every now and again because i call it a connector and not a pigtail potato potato whatever it's still the same thing uh it comes with the butt connectors that have the shrink the shrink wrap butt connectors in the pack with it and that's what i've always used and i hate to swap if something's doing me a good job but i made a bad cramp earlier on the number one so this time i'm gonna get to use these now i've used these on plenty of stuff before they seem to do a pretty good job and if you never used them i'll leave a link to them in the description but one thing that i'm going to emphasize on once you solder them let them set and completely cool off before you mess with them at all if not you'll pull them apart so but all in all they don't look horrible but you can't tell i pulled them off and they were clean most of them are really dark right around the edges there where they've gotten hot all right so i don't expect that you guys will be able to see this but the wire is overlapping itself really really good right there i don't like that it butted up against that but the rest of it i'm happy with so i'm gonna go ahead and crimp that right there so all i'm gonna do is take i got a little torch and i'm gonna Have to lock it where to stay on i'm gonna try to stay off of everything else and put this torch right on that solder from a distance you don't want to get right up on it or you'll mess up that shrink wrap in the cover and stuff start way back and ease closer as you have to i see it starting to melt now i'll have to turn it loose and get the other side And my torch is running out of gas. Imagine that. Oh, I guess I'll go gas the torch back up and try to melt it again. It didn't do bad, but like right here, there we go. Got a little fire left in it, but it's not going to shrink down all the way to that white wire. So I will put electrical tape on it afterwards. She's out. I will put electrical tape on it afterwards, but the solder seems to work really good. I know it kind of looks a little goofy on camera, but it looks good in person. But I can grab a hold of this and pull pretty, pretty hard. Hard enough, I'm worried I'll damage a connector up there. And it's in there. And you can see this is... From this, it runs all the way through. Then it's on the connector, and it did shrink pretty much all the way around. And it also shrunk down and grabbed a hold of this little smaller wire that I didn't think it would. That glue strip right there is supposed to keep water out. Did extremely good on this side, but not so good on this side. But it is isn't on there. So I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around this because I don't wanna take a chance on it rubbing something right there. And then we'll put the other one on. All right, guys, here is number two. And I was really, really happy with the way the first one felt. I went back and checked it again. So we're going to just take and stay kind of out away from it. And I like to melt the solder first if I can. And then I'll flip it over and get the back after this does but I need both hands for that so I 
try not to blister that any more than I can than I have to, but these things have worked really good on everything I've used them for so far. It works a lot better if you intertwine, you know, and mesh the wires together as you're sticking them together, but you can't do that. It's really hard to do when the wire, the smaller wire is so stinking small and flimsy and the bigger wire is so uh, so much bigger and coarse. It just, I haven't been able to push them together like that. But I'm gonna put the camera down, let it flip it over and hit it again. And you see, I've already taped this one. So I'll probably wind up taping them together. See, it's still kind of flimsy. It takes it a few seconds to set up for that solder to set up. But I will roll it upside down and get the flame in here and melt it again. So when I was taking this heat shield apart or taking it off. There were one, two, three, four bolts in it, 10 millimeter bolts. And I noticed I was having a heck of a hard time getting this off. And I've taken one of these off before and it was because this stud is supposed to be screwed in the top of the valve cover and it came unscrewed down here versus unscrewing out of the this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. That comes out like that and then that comes out like that so now we'll go screw this back down into the engine back down into the valve cover and we'll be ready to put this on you can see there's one of these studs right here and that's pretty much looks like and this one goes right here so get this started right down by hand I'll put a ratchet in there, snug it up, hopefully snug enough that it will not try to do that again. And these wires, I meant to tell you guys, these wires on the connectors, they do not matter which wire on the plug. I right, just make this where it looks like it's out of the wind, not rubbing on anything. But the wires, you can interchange them whichever way. They don't matter which wire goes to which wire on here. So you can have, you can hook them one way or you can flip them around, hook them another way. As long as it gets the signal, it doesn't matter which one. It's not like a hot in the ground. So, all right, grab my ratchet, snug that down, snug that down, and then we'll get the heat, the heat shield. Now this is why I say I went ahead and replaced, replaced those two injector connectors. This thing is a pain in the butt to get off. And if this pipe was on here that goes up and over it, now, I don't think it would make it. So this bolt right here goes into this hole right here. So that's how, much, how far forward it's got to go. Right like that. And I have a bolt here. I'm actually going to try to start it in this top one because that's where it just came, just came out of. But it's going to be kind of frustrating because I'm going to be working my feel. But I believe that got it. All these are 10 millimeters on the heat shields. The only tools that I really had to have to take this apart was a 10 and a 13. That's pretty much, if I remember correctly, that's close to all of it. Now, when I start this one, it should square the rest of them up and I can put them in, but you will need swivel, swivel sockets. If you do not have swivel sockets, you're, you're gonna have a hard time with this job. So, Try to tidy that up just a little bit better, but I should have ran that plug underneath that fuel rail. Would have helped a lot, but didn't know. So anyway, one mess at a time. So I had to put my tire step back on because I need to get up in there to tighten that shield down. And this is why I say I went ahead and replaced those other two connectors. I had to do that. And that's why you also need swivel sockets because good luck getting at those with a straight socket. And that's what I got going on tightening the heat shield bolts up. And I got that one left, but the back two are already tight. So hit that one and we'll move on. So my phone started blowing up and I'm not sure where I left off at, but I've got this bolt is in and tight and this bolt is in and tight. So the next thing I'm gonna do 
is remember I changed those injector connectors so the next thing I'm gonna do is pull this up and put that bolt in and probably put one in the top that's easier to get to and then we're gonna throw some fire at this thing we're gonna fire it up and see make sure I got no leaks and all that stuff and then I can really start buttoning it up I'm not gonna get too carried away with this because I will probably need to pull that back off and get it loose to put the shield back on the manifold I had literally forgot all about that and I haven't heard this thing run in a week and a half now since before Thanksgiving over two weeks so she's a mess I do expect the check engine light to be on because I did have the ignition on when I unplugged the parameter probe letting my air tanks build up I also expect the batteries to be a little weak because that went completely dead but if the edge fires up I might clear the code on it first I really miss my truck y'all let's just fire it up and see what happens there went the air compressor speeding up now this is on. Make sure the parameter is working because I was really rough with it getting it out of the manifold. If I'd known, I should have probably never taken it out. But let's sit here and do its thing. Check engine light is not on. That's great. Give it a little gas if we hear squeaks. No squeaks. Everything up here, sorry, I turned the flashlight on for you guys earlier. Everything looks to be moving around like it should. I hate to rev it up that high, but I wanted to see the boost move. about 220 miles on no truck since I got the exhaust manifold back on and so far everything's good remember the squeak it had before the hours and the odometer as of this morning everybody always asks how many miles on the truck now and a lot of times I forget so I just do this so on the manifold bolts if I, if I didn't say I looked up the information two or three different places and it seemed like they were all different so I didn't really get a good solid answer on what to torque those exhaust manifold bolts to but I did torque them to 28 foot pounds is where I put the nuts on the studs um, with there being so much conflicting information, I don't know, you'd think that would be easy, but maybe I was just looking at it wrong or looking at the wrong time or whatever. You know, I just wasn't getting, I wasn't hitting the button right. But that, I put these at 28 foot pounds, I think it'll be fine. It's only an eight millimeter stud, so I didn't want to go much more than that. Uh, some said 55, some said 40, 45, I think. And, uh, when I said 28 felt good. When I felt it click on 28, that's I felt like that's where I wanted to be. Um, to keep in mind, guys, I'm a mechanic. I'm just trying to get things done. So anything I did in this video, do it at your own risk, you know. Um, but if I can do it, I feel like anyone can do it. I mean, it's you got to have a lot of patience, especially dealing with the broke off stud. Uh, one thing I learned from this video is not to second guess myself. I should have jumped in and hit that stud harder and and got it out faster, you know. But with it being the the metal stud and the aluminum head, and I haven't I haven't had to deal with a broken off bolt in years, so you know it's it's something I feel like someone who does who does anything every day will do it better. You know, repetition and experience is everything, and I don't have either one, so. 
on that. But I wished I would have dug in and just kept banging on it until I got it out. But I feel like things worked, worked out the way they did because when my neighbor dropped off those little carbide ball cutters is what he called them. When I looked them up, it come up as end mills. Um, I'm going to leave a link for those in the description too. Those things, the weld that was on the stuff where the guy tried to weld to it to get it out, those things chewed right through that. They chewed right through the extractor. Those things are, they're, they're tough. They're, I'm going to keep those on hand from now on. Um, but, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, I say I hope this helps somebody out. And like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.